So I have with me here, the Aperture 100X. <sighs> Pre-ordered this thing, it came in the mail, they didn't even tell me about it. Just showed up one day. What's up with people not telling me about stuff? Weird, anyway, we're on the road right now. As you can see, we're in a hotel. People both sides of me on these, these walls are super thin. I can hear the TV over there. So I'm trying to be like quiet, you know? We are up in the Northern part of the United States of America. And we are shooting a couple things with some growers, learning about corn and farming and some really cool stuff. But anyway, I brought this light just in case we need it for the shoot. So I'm gonna pull it out, do a little bit of an unboxing here so you can see what the 100X comes with. I have a 100D on the way as well. I think what we're gonna try to do is do a couple lighting things in here, see how it plays and we'll go from there. Ooh, some aperture stickers. Got a little manual, won't read that. I'll just post in Facebook groups and annoy everybody. Please remove it before use. I'm assuming they mean that. Okay, Ooh, we got a little safety cable on our power supply. That's awesome. Little power cable. And the bad boy itself. The Aperture 100X. Fresh should turn this little light on. <laughs> Dude, who needs a 100X when you have a hotel light mounted to your wall, dude? Okay guys, so a few things to note. This is made of plastic parts rather than all full metal or steel. I've heard a couple people having some problems and they're tightening it down too much and some of the pieces start to crack. Obviously they're a cheaper version of some of the lights they've been putting out, so they're not gonna be built as tough as the other lights, so you wanna be careful with them and just know that you may have to buy another one of these because this light's only $250. Because of what I do, I'm not in the position to buy a bunch of expensive lights right now, but I still need good lighting, so this is a great option for me. Is that a piece of glass right there? Yep. Okay, so there's a little protective piece of glass covering the, the COV, so that's good. Second thing to note is, because this is the 100X, it is by color, so you get to control the color temperature, and you can do that through the app too, which is really cool, but it is a little bit less bright than the 100D. And this is the same thing for the 200X and the 200D. The 200X can be a little, have a little less output as far as brightness goes than the 200D. The, the 100D, 200D, 300D, 600D, any of the D that stands for daylight lights, those are gonna be brighter than the X, like of the same output light. And that's because they have those two different strips and they're changing between two different colors of LED. And so they're obviously not gonna be able to utilize the whole COB sensor or the COB chip, and that's gonna cause less output. If you're familiar with other aperture lights, you don't have this same reflector type. They actually have a flat silver, like a matte silver reflector but with the Amaran line, at least the 100X, 100D, 200D, 200X, they come with this newer one. I'm not sure what they call it, but it's a different reflector and I think it like produces more output in the reflector, but I've heard that it causes a hot spot, or at least I know there's a hot spot in these lights, like right in the center. I'm not sure if it's caused from the reflector or not. So that's one thing to know. You get a different reflector than what you may be used to, but they're now selling their older reflectors so you can get those on Aperture's website if you want to. Something that's new with the 100X as well is you don't have your ballast on the ground. You don't have your ballast like attached to the stand. The ballast is actually in the light. And so you just have your regular old three pin XLR connection into the power. This thing plugs in here and plugs into the wall. And it's got a little safety cable that you can hang it onto, which is nice. So you do have some things that dangle, but you don't have the whole power supply, which in some instances, this can be better than having a power supply on the stand or on the ground. But in a lot of ways too, it's actually nice to have it on the ground because you don't if you have your light high up you don't have to go all the way up to the light fiddle with the settings if your light's high up and point it down it's like really hard you have to like just take the stand down and change it put it back up or if it's just right on the stand you can just do it if it's on the ground you can just change all your settings right there which is really nice but at the same time you can connect to the Sidus Link app through Bluetooth and you're able to change all your settings there. Not having the ballast off of the light is not that big of a deal. But if you did want to run this off of a battery power, you can just buy the thing that Aperture sells that allows you to run it off battery and you don't have to worry about like extra dangling cords. It's just one cord from here to the battery supply and you can move it around freely, which is really nice. So I don't know if that's a pro or a con. To me, it's just something different. So I wanted to point that out. It does have the standard Bowens mount, so any of the Aperture Accessories that you may use for other aperture lights will fit on this. A lot of uh, photography accessories will fit on this too. It's kind of becoming a really popular mount in the indie film 
YouTube or content creation world, whatever you want to call it. But for sm like people who are creating smaller things and kind of smaller budgets or like owner operators, the Bones mount's becoming really popular. So you're able to use all those things and the Light Dome SE, which is like the smaller version of Aperture's really popular Light Dome is coming out soon, which will work with this. And it's kind of built for these smaller style lights, so. All right, cool. That's the Aperture Amaran 100X unboxing. Got a little bit of details about the light. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to YouTube. I've seen a lot of these videos in the past where people would just take one light and they're like 10 lighting setups, 10 cinematic setups with just one light. So since we, you know, have one light, let's find a couple of these lighting setups that we like and let's, let's test this thing out, see what it can do. We found a video here. We're gonna go 10-ish cinematic lighting setups, only one light. Let's see what, Mr. Potato Jet, Mr. Jet has to say. So we're going to take you through 10 lighting sets that you can achieve with just a few pieces of lighting gear, and here we go. What we're doing is we're just going to show what a Fresnel lens can do unmodified on someone's face. We'll, we'll do this without a Fresnel. There we go. Let me take this thing off. Do we still have the hotspot? No. So the reflector is what's causing the hotspot. All right, let's do this. Two is gonna be softbox. Number three, softbox ram brain. All right, guys. So I did bring with me this newer softbox. So let's pull it out. Let's test it out. Let's see if we even like it. Okay. Hopefully you don't have to set these up every time because that would be. It looks like you might have to set these up every time. Oh gosh. Okay. So that took a long time. We're done with that. I didn't like that. Next step, diffusion. Let's throw it on, test it out. light above the camera. All right, so this is the top down right in front of the camera. Supposedly going for the beauty look here. Do I look beautiful? Would you date this face? Hold on. Is that better? Does that look good? So I don't have an OC stand here, so I can't do this. But I could probably do it with like the stand in the shot. Light is straight over top of me as much as I could get it. I don't have a C stand or anything, so it's just angled all the way down. You can see how you can barely see my eyes. It's kind of dramatic. Hmm. Thinking shot. The harsh light is that you can shape it and sculpt it. Oh my gosh. Hold on. Go back. He's blind. He's no longer going to be able to work as a gap. What are the men? Okay. I don't know. I don't know how many of you guys went to film school out there. But when I see this lighting setup right here, I'm like immediately transported back into a classroom, sitting in a chair, and I'm watching someone's student film who didn't know how to light, which was like all of us. And this, this is like the setup, like 95% of the time, this is what the lighting looked like. Cause like they gave you lights and usually they're like, it's like an RA650 kit. You get two 650s, two 300s. Maybe you get like some work lights that they give you if you're shooting at night and use those to light cause you don't know what you're doing. And you just point it just straight at your subject. And it's very nostalgic for me, you know, that time in my life is like, I love it. But like, gross, I hate it. All right guys, well that was just a first look with the Aperture 100X, which is lighting me right here with the softbox. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Quick unboxing, quick first look. Of course, I'm gonna be using the light a lot more and putting out some more content about it. So let me know what questions you guys have down below and I will see you guys in the next one. Take care, peace.
All right, I got six minutes left on this card. I'm gonna see if I can break this down in less than that and like keep it so it's easy to put up next time. I doubt it. It's definitely not as convenient as like an aperture light dome, but that wasn't so bad. Definitely not as bad as I thought. We'll see if like, if I get used to putting the rods into the speed ring, if I can do it a little bit faster. I don't know, we'll see.